here with uh, Philip, the Mentalist. Um, mm. So your trick is a Mentalist. I mean, we've seen the show The Mentalist on television. Is there yeah. anything like that? I, I don't know. I've never seen it, <laughs> genuinely. And somebody um, gave me the box set, and one day when I've got flu, I'll, I'll sit down and watch it. Hey, it's brilliant. But he, he, yeah, he's he's allegedly deducing stuff through sort of Sherlock Holmes kind of ways. Is that right? Mm. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. He's not claiming psychic <laughs> powers. No, no. He just no. comes up with a, a theory which ha I guess happens to be right. Yeah. 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 I guess it probably, <laughs> probably is. Yes. <laughs> so what what do you love about doing this on stage and performing for people? <laughs> you know, our job is kind of to make other people forget about theirs. And if you're in a, I've never done a lineup show like this. Um, I joined the Illusionists when we were in Sydney, but until then I've always just done my own show. And my show has a sort of strong, sort of narrative about belief and need and that kind of thing. That's what fascinates me personally. But also making intelligent, rational, skeptical people like yourself go, okay, I don't believe in any of this, but there is no way you could have known. That's kind of cool, I guess. We're, I think there's a really good reason why there's more men in magic than, than the wonderful uh, ginger because most men just don't grow up really. So we, we like, we, you know, we're show offs, aren't we? We're up there showing off. And why, particularly for me, mentalism? I just feel that with a modern, sophisticated audience, it just really, if I can take them to that point where they go, okay, I don't believe in this, but there is, that's a lovely little moment to, mm. to take someone to. When you see a handkerchief disappear, you marvel at the skill of it, but you don't for a second think, okay, he's, he's mastered the molecules of, you know, you, it's a clever trick that I didn't work out. For me personally, mentalism has that ambiguity about it, and I, I exploit that. All right, so, well, let's put your skills to the test here. Maybe you could do a bit of a trick on okay, me. Okay, yeah. Well, you strike me um, as the more sort of rational, logical, empirical, evidence-based end of the spectrum. I'd, yeah, uh, I'd say that's true. Yeah, so this is, this, this is always something I get out for those occasions, because colour is ultimately very subjective. Um, take that cue, I'll happily hold that for okay. you. Um, six different colours on there, Ed. Yep. Without telling me which one, is there one colour on there that you are more drawn to than any other? Yes, there is. And if I asked you to explain why you're more drawn to that colour, all that rationality and logic kind of goes out the window. There's no real reason. It's subjective, it's aesthetic. Unless it's a sort of team sport type it's, association. It's, so it's just a, a aesthetic. Mm. Right. In the limited time we've spent together, Ed, do you think I could know if I told you what that colour was now, how would you rationalise that? Well, I'd say you have one in six chances it's of luck. getting it right. Okay, well, let, let, let's test that. So here's the game. I'm going to get you to take the cue, put it in your hand with the colour you're thinking of facing up, cover it over with your other hand, okay. uh, and I'll look away while you're doing that. Okay, cool. More impressive that way. So let me, let me look away, and let me know when you've done that, Ed. Yep, I've done that. So if I look round now, I'm not going to see anything? You're not going to see clear. a single cube. Perfect. So, first go. Um, this cameraman, he, he's worked with you a lot. Any ideas what he might have picked, Mr. Cameraman? No, no idea. Okay, the obvious choice, I'll, I'll be candid with you, Ed, is that you, work, that you go for blue because of your eye colour, but I don't think that's what you've done. Uh, and maybe it's the influence of the room you're in right at the moment, I don't know, but I believe if I've got you right and you've desperately tried to give nothing away, I love that you care this much, Ed, but I believe you've gone for red. That's what I think, let's have a look. Got red. He's okay, got very right. good. Red. So it's a one in six chance. I got lucky, as you said. So the second go gets more interesting. Mm. I want you to pick a colour now. Could be the same one again, of course. Mm -hmm. That's what the psychopaths do. I want you to pick a colour that you don't think I think you're going to pick. Okay. Okay, so the trick here for you is to be unobvious, okay. unpredictable. All right. Do All right. you know yet which of the six colours you're going to go for? I think I have an you idea. You do? Yep. Exciting, isn't yeah, it? It is. <laughs> Ish. Right. All right. Let me know when you've done that. I have done that. You've done that. Okay. I've done that. Hmm. Now, I don't know how much this is the same in New Zealand as it is in the UK. Um, we're, we're about to find out, I guess. But in the UK, certainly, when you ask people to, to pick a colour and it not be obvious, hmm. there are certain colours on that cube that are perhaps less obvious. Hmm. Um, now, on a level, picking blue might be less obvious because it seems so obvious I've mentioned it earlier but I don't think you did for me the colors on that cube that are less obvious are yellow and orange um, they're not the primary colors the smile is being suppressed I, I think if I had to guess I think you've probably gone for orange that would be my feeling let's have a look damn, okay he's orange right it. he's right you say damn like me getting it right a bad thing um, okay so at this point the skeptic rationalist in you can kind of justify this by saying well maybe maybe he's just reading me, maybe I'm following certain patterns of behaviour. So the last go, we're going to set the cat amongst the pigeons, I hope. Okay. I want you to pick one entirely at random, Ed, okay. and don't look at it. Okay. So we'll be in a situation where a colour has been selected and you have no idea so what it is. So nobody knows. Nobody knows. Okay. So you can't be giving it away. I All can't right. be reading you. So do that, shake it up, uh, and let me know when, you, when you're done. 
Done. So you've got one picked. You no, haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it at all. Perfect. What do you think it is? There's um, there's white and red and yellow and blue and green and orange. What's your feeling? Well, the logic in me would say I have no idea. Yeah, of course, <laughs> absolutely. If I had to guess, yes. maybe yellow. That's what you think, yes. yellow. Mm. Any particular reason? No reason, just a, an unobvious okay. colour color so, you mentioned before. Here's the thing. Skeptical, rational man wants evidence if he's going to change his mind. You pick one entirely at random. You have no idea what it is. I asked you to choose. You said yellow, and of course it will be yellow. It will be whatever you say. Mm. Otherwise, there's no point in me being here. It's a rubbish <laughs> trick, isn't it? True. So how, when that is yellow, and it will be, how has that happened? Is it luck? Who knows? It, I guess it's luck. It's luck. It's luck. It really is luck. That I recreate every single time I do it. <laughs> okay, so you pick one at random. No one knows what it was, including you. I asked you to choose. You said yellow. Have a look at it. That's yellow. That's yellow right there. Ed, you well astound done. me, Philip. Well, you did it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank and you uh, very much. enjoy the rest of the ship. Thank you very much. Cheers.